On this channel, I rarely talk about animals that went extinct due to human activity directly. However, one of the times I have done this is when I talk about the stellar sea cow, which by the time modern humans found it, was isolated to just a few local islands in the Bering Sea, specifically the Commander Islands. However, fossils of this animal show that it had a much broader range, but that's not the case with this animal we're going to talk about in this video, because the dodo was limited to just one island, Mauritius. An island which is overall smaller than the metro area of Phoenix, Arizona. So this animal and its interactions on this limited island with people led directly to its extinction. And what we can learn about this animal can actually help us understand how to potentially prevent extinctions happening on other islands in the future. So for starters, the dodo is often portrayed as an incredibly, incredibly dumb animal, and that it couldn't possibly protect itself from predators, either humans, or those that were introduced by humans when they first got to the island. However, what's the truth about it? Well, I mean, like any other bird, it was just trying to make a living. It just happened to have ended up in a very specific habitat that meant it was different from any other modern bird. And this is despite the dodo being very, very well adapted to the island of Mauritius up until humans got there and changed the environment on that island. And the most obvious adaptation for this is flightlessness. And you might be wondering, why did they become flightless? I mean, shouldn't flight always be a good adaptation no matter what the animal is? And the answer is no, it's part of why so few animals do it. For the most part, flight is a very dumb adaptation because it limits what the animal can do outside of flight. You can actually still see some of this lingering legacy in modern birds, specifically with animals like the Cory Bustard, which is the heaviest flying bird today. And it weighs around 40 pounds, which means that essentially most flying birds are limited to just that weight because their specific behaviors need to still be able to support flight. Now, the dodo still probably maxed out at around this size, maybe a little bit less, and probably about a meter high, or so around three feet. So why didn't it fly? Well, the quarry bustard lives in mainland Africa. There's dozens of predators that would love to snack on one. The dodo lives on a tiny island off the coast of Africa with no natural predators. It frankly doesn't need to be concerned about trying to fly away from anything that's going to kill it. Or at least, for a long time, it didn't need to worry about that. And it's really important to understand that they went through this change because flight is a very expensive evolutionary adaptation. Everything the animal does needs to be adapted for flight if it wants to fly. And that includes things like the sizes of certain muscles relative to one another. And if those muscles aren't within certain bounds, the animal will fail to fly. And if it's not ready for another kind of lifestyle, it's going to die out. But that just means that the dodo then, once it did get to this island and did find plentiful food on the ground, didn't need to fly, and you can see the reduction of some of those muscles. Specifically in the keel, which is part of the sternum, and where the main flight muscles attach on birds, you can see that it's very significantly reduced, even compared to animals like chickens, which don't fly that well, and while they are smaller in general than dodos were, you can still see that at least comparably relative to its own size, it still has a much larger keel for those muscle attachments. And of course, not needing to fly means it could also change other parts of its anatomy. For example, it likely had a much larger digestive system, and unfortunately there weren't any very good dissections of dodos which took place, so we can't confirm this, but it is likely based on reports of what they were eating. Because it seems like they were mostly eating fruits, and fruits are generally very dense with a lot of woody, planty material, which takes longer to digest. And by losing their ability to fly, they could then invest in that heftier digestive system. Of course, for this fruit to reach its digestive system, it first would have had to go through a somewhat peculiar beak, which one sailor actually wrote about in 1631. The dodos are superb and proud. They presented themselves with an unyielding stern face and a wide open mouth, very jaunty and audacious of gait. They did not budge before us. Their war weapon was the mouth, with which they could bite fiercely. Their food was raw fruit. They were not dressed very well, but were rich and fat. Therefore, we brought many of them on board to the contentment of us all. So the mouth could open very wide and it had a very pointed beak, which was probably very useful for manipulating the large fruits they ate. And you wouldn't actually know this just based on the single dried head of one that is found at the Natural History Museum in London. And that's because much of the keratin that surrounded the beak is already worn away in this animal. However, many artistic depictions show just how pointed this beak was, even many of the not-so-great ones. 
However, it's important to note that the one by Usted Manser is probably the most accurate depiction of a dodo that we have from that time period. Because Usted Manser was one of the few artists who took specific care to try and capture the animals in the most scientifically accurate light possible. And so this is, again, probably our most accurate depiction of one. And you can see it does have this very heavily curved beak, as well as a lot of dark feathers around the head, almost like a monk's hood, which some people did describe it as having. So it's not quite the same kind of gray models that you see at many museums throughout England. Instead, it probably looked a little more varied in plumage, though not very bright at all. There also appears to have been a small blue patch on the lower jaw, and this was probably used as a display feature during breeding season. However, it's also important to note what that sailor wrote earlier, where he mentioned specifically that their war weapon is their mouth. And it seems likely that they may have actually competed with one another by biting each other. And there's two main lines of evidence that help to show this. The first are some sub-fossil remains, so they're not old enough to have fully fossilized, but they are old enough to not be from recent times. These have been dated to about 3,000 years ago, and what we can tell is that there's some of these bones that are actually fractured and potentially even rehealed. So it seems likely that they were actually biting at each other during competition. Additionally, its closest relative, which is now also extinct, is the Rodriguez solitaire, which was a closely related bird which blew to another island within the same volcanic arc, specifically Rodriguez Island. And it had large wing spurs that they would use for competition with one another. And so it's very likely that these birds were doing very physical competition, at least their ancestor was. And then both of these two birds, once they ended up on these isolated islands, evolved slightly different ways of going about that kind of combat. But these species may have already been separating out their fighting styles long before they made it to the islands. Because the islands are about 10 million years old based on the different volcanic rocks that are present. Meanwhile, the dodo and the Rodriguez solitaire seem to have split off around 23 million years ago. So for about 13 million years, they lived on the mainland of the continents and eventually just happened to end up getting blown to these two separate islands. And it could have been any of the pigeons in that region that actually got blown to these islands because yes, the dodo is just a pigeon. In fact, its closest living relative is the Nicobar pigeon, which is common throughout much of Southeast Asia and parts of Oceania. And in fact, the Rodriguez solitaire and the dodo split from that common ancestor with the Nicobar pigeon about 35 million years ago. So 35 million years ago, this lineage split off. They were still living in likely parts of Southeast Asia evolved separate lineages, and then each of those lineages got blown to tiny islands in the Indian Ocean. So it's very convenient for them that they actually got there. And it is important to note that it's far more likely they came from that part of Southeast Asia rather than coming from Africa. And that's because most of the winds that do cross the Indian Ocean do blow from east to west rather than west to east. So it's a lot easier to get from Indonesia to Madagascar than from Africa to Madagascar, which is honestly kind of unique. I, I don't think a lot of people fully recognize just how strange that is, but that also means that whatever storm blew them had to blow them all the way across the entire Indian Ocean. So these birds were incredibly lucky to even survive at all. And it's really unfortunate then that we ended up killing them. And it's not really just our fault, at least in some ways, because many of the sailors who had reported eating the dodo said it tasted horrible. So it wasn't really hunted into extinction. However, humans did bring things like pigs and rats to the island, and dodos seemingly only would lay one egg at a time, and any egg that's just sitting there is pretty fair game for things like rats and pigs. They'll eat anything. So it seems like many of the species that we accidentally introduced or even deliberately introduced to this island actually caused their extinction. And eventually, less than 100 years after the Dutch started settling the island, they went extinct. It was a very sudden extinction. And it was also pretty much the first time that people realized, oh, things can go extinct. For a long time, there was this prevailing belief that God would not let any of his creations go extinct, that God would prevent animals from going extinct. And that even if they went extinct in one area, they still must exist somewhere else. And that was definitively shown wrong here because there's nothing like the dodo anywhere else in the world. And then suddenly there weren't any of them anywhere in the world. It was really the first time that researchers realized that humans can make an animal go extinct, and now in the face of climate change, many more people are starting to recognize that. And as that continues to happen, we need to keep in mind what happened with the dodos. 
because we don't want many other animals to go the way of the dodo and be dead as a dodo. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, this is a what the hell is it video. It's a pigeon. Uh, I just think that's a very interesting concept for a dodo because we're like, oh yeah, it's a big bird, but knowing it's a pigeon, it's a rat with wings, except barely any wings. This, these videos are voted on by the patrons over on Patreon. So if you're interested in supporting the channel and also getting some opportunity to dictate what is on the channel, uh, feel free to head over there. My wife and I are actually recording a podcast. We'll, we'll see how it goes. So keep an eye out for that. I don't really think I have much else to say other than take care, be safe, keep wearing your mask, get your vaccine, and don't go extinct.